<laughs> Yay! Oh, pretty good. Episode 31. 31. 31 damn episodes of Alex and Jim analyze Bill we analyze, and lyrics. We analyze them. Yeah, we do. So you yeah. know what the song's about. Not just so you know what the song is about. Yes. I should point that out because it's really obvious very early what the song is about. Uh, and so if that's all we were doing, like it was cracking a puzzle, we'd be done. Yeah. So, but there's more to it than that. It really what we're doing a lot of the time is Alex and Jim psychologically analyze Billy Joel. Yeah. That's so mostly what we do. That's mostly what we do. And you know, that's your fault for making art. You're asking for it. Yep. How dare you, sir? Yeah. If you had painted paintings, we'd be doing the same thing to you. Yes. We'd be sure you're mad at somebody and that's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault. And you're kind of being a dick about it. That's our running theme is we're sure it's your fault. <laughs> we can't wait to see you live. <laughs> yes. Uh, and if we can't get in, that'll be your fault too. Yep. So uh, what song, do you remember what song we analyzed last episode? Oh man, we, <laughs> I did until you asked me and now I can't remember. <laughs> you did that thing where the question knocked the answer out of my head. Yep, I'll give you a hint. It was on one of his albums. Oh, the music album? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the music one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what did we do? It was on 52nd Street, and it was until the night. That's right. What it was. Okay. Ooh. Now, here's a funny thing about that song. So, um, for anybody who may have seen the episode drop today, I waited until today to drop that one. Uh, okay. Because I, what I, I generally, what I do is I drop last episode the day we record the next one. Oh, okay. Smart. Yeah. That way, I don't know what the next part of the <laughs> <laughs> that way you don't have to do it later yeah okay. yeah, yeah. yeah i was gonna say that way well that way bruno mars has something to look forward to that's right that's right his sundays are notoriously empty absolutely yeah he goes to church i'm sure right and then what he has a brunch feels like a brunch guy to me right then he has like the sunday scaries because he has to go to work tomorrow <laughs> Starts getting all. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. So he's got that to look forward to. So what I generally do is I link to an officially sanctioned version of the song, so that hypothetically, if you click click the link, Billy Joel will get some of the coin. Oh, nice. So all I right. feel like that's a good way to do it. That's more than fair. Yeah. So I had a choice. I had a live version or from the album, because they're both at billyjoel.com. I picked the live version and I'm listening to the introduction. And he says, this next song is dedicated to the Righteous Brothers. Oh. I don't think we ever thought about it as, oh, here's another song where Billy Joel is a fan of somebody and did a thing like they did. Yeah, I didn't really. Um, and do you now listening to it with that in mind, does it sound right to you? No. Right? It's <laughs> and here's yeah. why. Here's the funny thing, because I'm like, I listen to it and I'm like, well, it doesn't really sound like you're doing a tribute to the Righteous Brothers. And then I'm like, oh, Billy Joel trying to vocally do a tribute to the Righteous Brothers is akin to me doing, I don't know, a basketball tribute to Kareem. <laughs> yeah. It might not come off in the execution. <laughs> there, might, there could be a gap in skill levels. Yeah. Also, there are two guys. Yes. There are two guys who both sing great. And you're a roadie who got on stage. <laughs> <laughs> And nobody stopped you. That's how that was how his career started. That's how his career started. He was the roadie for the Cold Spring Harbor tour. 
<laughs> and so, nobody, nobody knows what happened to the real musician. That's right. So here's the thing. And it reminds me of for the longest time, my quibble about that song. Right. That he's harmonizing with Billy Joel. Right. So no variation in the vo voices. Yeah. Yeah. But the live version, he has another dude singing and it's a little closer. Okay. Okay. Wait, the live version of the uh, Until the Night or for the longest time? Until the Night. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And I'm sure the live version of For the Longest Time, you've got to have two dudes doing stuff. But why? Wh I get why you wouldn't let another person play piano on your album, right? That is your thing. Unless you're George Harrison, you don't do that. George Harrison was a weirdo who was like, oh, I'm going to get another guy to play guitar on the song I wrote about guitars. <laughs> but do you think it's an ego thing that he wouldn't? I, I'm, I was just thinking about it. I would bet probably just more of a logistical thing. Like why, he, why wouldn't he have a second vocalist on the track? Yeah. On the album? I bet like, then you'd have to credit it. It'd be a duet technically. Do yeah. you get like another famous person and call it a duet? Because it wouldn't really be a duet if he's singing all the same stuff you are. If you, then you'd have to like trade verses or something to make it a duet. Right. So it's, yeah, it's weird. You'd have to be like a brother act for one song. <laughs> <laughs> Although yeah. vocalists have done that. Like Sting was on, a, is in um, Money for Nothing. Sting is a guest vocalist, but he's just background. That's true. And he is in the video. No, the video was... Nope. Uh, I guess you could say he was in the video, but yeah. it was animated. And his um, color that out that song really nicely too. Here's the other thing it could be, and I know this from making TV shows, is when people are like, hey, why didn't you try this? Um, most of the time, or often, the answer is, oh, we did try that, and it wasn't as good as we thought. So ah, yeah. <laughs> he might have just tried it and been like, oh, man, this kind of stinks. I'll do it by myself. Yeah. And it might be because of the, the range he lives in isn't fun to, to harmonize with. I, you know, I don't know, because we've talked about that, where his range is where it is, and we love it, but... Yeah, could be another uh, a producer came in and was like, hey, look, everybody has a better voice than you, so if you sing with somebody, your voice is going to sound terrible, and that's not good for us. Uh, <laughs> it could be a hundred things. Oh, I like the idea of that producer having that conversation. <laughs> right. Bill, listen, uh, it, we love the idea. Why don't you just dedicate it to him in the concert instead of <laughs> like getting, I don't know, who would you get that had a beautiful voice? Richard Marks? <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> uh, who did do some backup singing on some album? I can't remember which. He is on some Billy Joel songs. Oh, really? Mm hmm Okay. I wish I could remember. That would be handy. Research department, look that up. <laughs> um, yeah, so I found that interesting that there was this other color to the song that we didn't hit on, but I don't think we're wrong. I don't think, unless he just was saying, but it doesn't make sense to just out of the blue go, this is dedicated to the Righteous Brothers. Um, did it have, wait, were they Unchained Melody? Yeah. Yeah. There, there is a little element to that song where it kind of is a, a, not completely Unchained, but it does, it doesn't follow the patterns of a normal song with the verses and say it kind of wanders off in various directions. I mean, he may have had that aspect of it in mind. Sure. He may have been like trying to write like them rather than sound like them. So here's the other thing I was thinking when I, I saw the clip, I thought a lot of times we're a little judgmental of the fact that he does, or a lot of, not just us, but a lot of people are like, wow, he really does take from a lot of places and who is he? But then maybe he's a guy who just loves music. Definitely he is that. And then maybe it's amazing that that's who, that it comes out that way. Yeah, maybe you're amazed. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, I think so. I think, you know, it's got to be true that every single musician is pulling from places. Yeah. And, uh, they're maybe more subtle sometimes than he is. Um, and sometimes they're just in cover bands. Um, yeah. And he's like somewhere in between. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just pulling off bigger pieces here and there. Um, I mean, it is interesting you bring that up because the song that you chose for this week has multiple pulls from various eras um, that don't, yeah, I wouldn't think would go together. And we'll get into it when we talk about it. Yeah. But I think it's just like, oh, I'm made of the, you know, everybody's made of their influences to some degree. Yeah. And you could make a little pie chart and say, oh, I'm, you know, 95% George Carlin. Right. Um, <laughs> whatever you think you are. Um, uh, Three percent at best, George Carlin, but uh, <laughs> I thought of this the other day. There's a new bit I wrote and I was like, oh, this is absolutely because I love Jim Gaffigan. Oh, yeah. Totally. Now, it's got, Jim Gaffigan will make jokes about, he will make jokes that are objectively just jokes. Yeah. And he doesn't dress them up. You know, he doesn't say this happened to me the other day. Yeah. Or whatever you're supposed to say. Yeah. yeah. In his last special, he did 10 minutes of just horse jokes. Great. And then some of them were puns. Some of them were more than that. And then he goes, and at one point he goes, the problem with doing 10 minutes of jokes about horses is that the rest of the show, you're going to think, is this one going to be about a horse? It's very funny. Very funny. And you kind of did. <laughs> but I remember I, wrote, I did this joke and I performed it in front of a comic I respect, but who's kind of judgmental. <laughs> okay. He goes, that's a good joke, but it kind of sounds like stand up. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fucking great note. <laughs> yeah. My response is, this is why you will never be loved. Also accurate. And a good, actionable note. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this sounds like stand-up. Uh, sounds like stand-up. Also, when you hold that microphone, that yeah. looks like stand-up. Everything yeah. about this reeks of stand-up. Yeah, the whole thing, you went up on that stage, I mean, could you... Right. The drink tickets... It's so obvious what you're doing, bro. Yeah. You're stealing from stand-up. <laughs> and then you had that laugh part at the end. I don't remember what they call it, but at the end there was a thing. There's a little a line that makes people laugh. <laughs> Jesus. Whoa. Unexpected visitor. We're all right. Oh, that's exciting. Is it pizza? No. No. Pizza visits you a lot. It does, all yeah. too often, yeah. But never uninvited. No, pizza is always welcome. Or, or unwelcome, yeah. Hey, okay, we'll talk about the song, but how about we write a movie where pizza comes over, but it was not invited, and it's a horror film. Oh, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody um, in it uh, is intolerant to dairy. <laughs> and it's a white pizza. It's yeah. all, no sauce, all cheese. Yeah, it's the pizza nobody... People get once in a while and go, oh, this will be good. And it is for two bites. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, right. I'm not a child. I should have got a pizza. <laughs> should have got a pizza instead of wet bread. <laughs> and well. All right. So I picked Sometimes a Fantasy. Yeah. Another sentence fragment. <laughs> yeah. Last we did until the night. Yeah. Sometimes, is that a prepositional phrase? I'm losing track of uh, all my English, all my strunk and white. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a uh, half a phrase. <laughs> okay, let's go with that. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes a fantasy. And uh, the house is LP. Yeah. Now, I honestly wasn't thinking about who he's aping here. Who do you say? I say, well, I say he's a victim of the era in some ways because the producing on it For sure. sounds very, there's some like Devo-y sound, mm -hmm. like that Devo echo effect. 
not even echo effect, just like it sounds like he's in a well. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Um, he definitely is doing the Buddy Holly hiccup a lot. Yeah. Okay. This is a I weird thing to pull in the, into the early 80s. Um, those are the two main things. And then, of course, uh, my favorite thing is <laughs> it starts with a sound effect. Oh, well, remind me. I... It's a phone. You hear a phone dial. Oh, that's right. Boop, 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 boop. That's right. <laughs> oh, which uh, is. Yeah, that's wonderful. He's, it's funny. He's a genius. He's just a hair removed from being Weird Al. Just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If just he... a little in love with the, and it, is it him or is it Phil Ramone? I think it's him. Probably him. It's probably him. Yeah. Yeah. Because he could say no. He's in charge. Yeah. If he had liked his parents better, he'd be Weird Al. That's right. Yes. Yep. If he'd gone down that road where he's like, yeah, I, I loved my parents. I love my parents and I'm very Christian. And they bought yep. me a ridiculously nice piano and I was secure enough that I didn't mind people making fun of me. Right. And now I waited long enough and now everybody loves me. Yep. That? Although then we'd have to pick who we like better. Weird Al or famous satirist Billy Joel. <laughs> oh, don't make me choose. <laughs> You'll lose to Weird Al. So this one also had a video too, of course, of him on the phone. <laughs> Great. In case you didn't get it. Yeah. Um, there is also, yeah, the the little album cover, you know, remember how the single used to have its own little album cover. Right. That's also him on the phone. Um, I guess. So I think it's about a phone call. Yeah. So I guess considering the other thing it could have been a picture of, phone call is your best bet. Oh, yeah. Thank God. Don't want that other. <laughs> thank God they got him like before the song started. Yeah. <laughs> before he finished dialing. Yeah. I don't want to like see oh that's the t-shirt he used we don't want that <laughs> no <laughs> oh. good alternate video idea i just had <laughs> <laughs> the end of the phone call <laughs> oh no all right I'm, i'll start us out all right i didn't want to do it but i got too lonely I had to call you up in the middle of the night. I know it's awful hard to try to make love long distance. So for sure, that's what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. But I really needed stimulation, though it was only my imagination. That's pretty clear what's going on. <laughs> it's a none. There's no metaphors. No. Um, I feel like we're well, you know, into this is. This album is him moving from like 70s piano guy to I'm um, going to be an 80s rock and roll guy now. Yeah. Or an 80s electronic keyboard guy. <laughs> and I think like metaphors suffered <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> just like, just sing about whatever is happening, man. I do like, it, it feels sort of daring for Billy Joel to me to do a song about this topic because this is a thing couples do you're on right. the road you're making a call and somebody tries to do you a solid <laughs> um it's also like new territory i think for him there's not much sexual talk in his previous stuff yeah a lot of hinting around and a lot of romance but this is very technical <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to not couch it in metaphor makes it extra jarring, I think. Would you say, by the way, this song is a little new wave? I mean, I noticed that that's how it sort of was listed. And it does feel like, uh, it feels like he's aiming for, or someone is, producers, whoever, is aiming for like a new wave, sort of that post-punk thing. Um, but it feels like such heavy lifting. <laughs> He's such a fucking meatball. 
Right. There's, there's nothing like slick. There's nothing Bowie-ish about him. Thank God he didn't try. Thank God he didn't try. He did skinny tie. I remember that. Well, great. That's enough. Yeah. Skinny tie, uh, electric keyboards. Great. But just don't, yeah, don't put on heels. Yeah, he went to ABC's tailor and goes, give me that skinny tie ABC's wearing. <laughs> right, and that's it. Yeah. And then I'm going to go beat up ABC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God he didn't do like a bowler hat and eyeliner. Oh. <laughs> Although, <laughs> it would have been fun to see. Um, but yeah, I do think it is someone's attempt to like jump the track away from 70s singer songwriter they're like you this is him trying to be a rock star yeah and you know if you're doing that in 1980 or 81 then you're like all right well who's a rock star right now gary newman <laughs> <laughs> david bowie Great and then a bunch, man, yeah. a bunch of british groups yeah so, and thank god he didn't try to sound british now I wonder because he takes the turn into that, but it's not like he stays there. He kind of just then turns back into. So I wonder if it was just like, we just got to get you into the new decade. I think so. And have people not think you're over. Yeah, I feel like most artists who last two or three decades, most of them have that an album somewhere in there where they were like, trying to match the times real hard yeah and it works or it doesn't work and then they either sinatra, stay with it for a while sinatra has some of the funniest trying to do rock and roll songs i've ever heard in my life oh god that sounds delightful they are um his version of so something by the beatles uh-huh beautiful song sinatra's voice is fine i can't not laugh every time <laughs> he's just yeah. it's that version of sincerity is not inside his body <laughs> <laughs> there uh there also was uh hall and oates had an album right about 1983 that um you know they were doing like basically soul they're soul guys um white as they may be uh, and then and in 83, they had that album that really went hard for like a new wave vibe. And it's, you know, and there were hits on it. Um, was that Man Eater? That was, no, that was like Method of Modern Love. Oh, yeah. Um, where it was like so much electronica going on. Um, but there are some deep cuts on that one that are so <laughs> bad. Rolling Stones, same thing. They had that um, Lucky in Love song. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. You're like, you're this grungy garage band. You're the world's most successful garage band is one of the ways I've heard the Rolling Stones described. It's great. And then you decide, nah, guitar. <laughs> yeah. Gross. I feel like in, in this case, uh, this whole album, Glass Houses, was like, all right, now we're doing rock and roll. And it works. It does, absolutely. On the whole, it's, it's a successful experiment. I like this song, all yeah. the weirdness of, of, of it all. It's a good little tune to listen to anyway. Absolutely. Now- A lot of echo, by the way, the other part, you're right, there is a lot of echo. Yeah. Um, Lyrically, very clear uh, to me, when I was listening to it with Sue, she said, oh, is he calling a phone sex hotline? Yeah. And then we thought, were there phone sex hotlines yet? And I think we didn't find the answer. Now, are you, is this a real question? Or are you trying to trick me into admitting something? No, no, no. Everyone knows <laughs> that you've done a whole lot of the hotlines and the regular kind, as well as just cold calling people, I think. Right? That's right. <laughs> you had the headset and a cubicle. And he was like, oh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, my name is Jim Bruce. Are you horny today? <laughs> okay, can well, I, thank you for I, picking up. Can I interest you in helping me out? <laughs> 
uh, you know, you catch a lot of people off guard. I'm like, oh, uh, a lot of seniors. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm one of my jams. Sure, sure. <laughs> but uh, were there hotlines? I suspect. During the whispered, yes. Uh, yeah, there were. So I think so, because if I'm remembering right, one of Mary Jo's early job interviews was for a phone center. And the reason <laughs> we didn't take the job is she goes, hey, guess what kind of phone center it is? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. That's a, that's a good indicator. Yeah. And it was funny, the, the lady, one of the ladies who worked there was trying to encourage her. It's like, it's not a bad job. You don't have to say really gross stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's only pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> also, you you can lie about what you're doing. Yeah. Phone. Well, you don't have to do all the things. Yeah. Oh, I, I hope there's not an integrity clause. I'll fire you if you're not really doing the things. <laughs> uh, you're misrepresenting the company. <laughs> um, well, it, I think it becomes clear as the song goes on that it, it's not a phone sex line. It's a person that he yeah. knows. And I think they're in a, in a relationship and he's on the road. I guess so. All right. So I think you're up. Why don't you do chorus and the next verse? All right. Well, chorus is important in this case. Yeah. Uh, it's just a fantasy. It's not the real thing. It's just a fantasy. It's not the real thing. But sometimes a fantasy is all you need. That's interesting. That seems like... Uh, enlightened maybe for the era it was like no no, no it's just, sometimes it's just this that does seem reasonably sex positive that's for sure right thank you it's very uh, uh dr ruth yeah sometimes you, i could hear her saying that or singing along <laughs> yep yeah anybody listening um when am i gonna take control get a hold of my emotions why does it only seem to hit me in the middle of the night you told me there's a number I can always dial for assistance. Cold. I don't want to deal with outside action. Only you can give me satisfaction. I So I think one of the things implied here, tell me if I'm right, is that, hey, I don't want to cheat. Yes. Phrasing so, is very weird on that. Yeah. It's not like, I love you so much, I don't want outside action. It's like, I don't want to deal with, <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to put up with the rigmarole yeah. of going out and cheating on you. It's exhausting. They follow you. Um, but then immediately, only you can give me satisfaction. Which is I very nice. More about, I think more about syllable count and rhyme than yeah. any kind of deeper point than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, the but good observations that were interesting, like I, he feels out of control of his emotions. Yeah. <laughs> I do like, why does it only seem to hit me in the middle of the night? You know what I think of that line? What? Sounds like stand up. <laughs> Why does, it, why does it only seem to hit me in the middle of the night? <laughs> well, my friend would hate it then. You guys get that too? <laughs> I know. This guy gets it. Ugh. Uh, why does it hit me? Emotions is weird. Emotions is weird. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it counter to the idea that sometimes a fantasy is all you need. Yeah. Um, or emotions is maybe just a really a euphemism for a big old boner. Right. <laughs> you know, and the other thing too is in the middle of the night is when you're on the road is a good moment when loneliness will kick your ass. Right. When you're so busy during the day, not really as much a problem. So you might make the phone call for the fun release, but also just to remind yourself, oh, there's another person who right. actually cares that I exist. So you talk for another 20 minutes while you're looking around for a t-shirt. 
<laughs> well, what else are you doing? What else is going on? <laughs> oh, that's great. It's just a fantasy. It's not the real thing. No. It's just a fantasy. It's not the real thing. No. But sometimes a fantasy is all you need. Um, by the way, is it in the first verse that he does the breath thing in the phone? <laughs> um, I think it's the next verse. Okay. I don't want us to miss that because that one, along <laughs> with the phone sound effects, Billy Joel being dirty in it, doing a little prince sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Borrowing probably uh, in a premonition, <laughs> borrowing from Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's a good question. Where is that? Sure, it would be better if I had you here to hold me. Be better, baby, but believe me, it's the next best thing. Great. I'm sure, sure there's many times you've wanted me to hear your secrets. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Don't be afraid to say the words that move me anytime you want to tell them to me. I like that because, hey, it's probably some dirty thing you've wanted to role play it's right. 3 a.m maybe it's less awkward if i'm not there <laughs> right it's almost certainly less awkward yeah you don't have to look at my face <laughs> when i <laughs> when my uh brow furrows when you pitch your weird idea and i'm sure part of the fantasy is he's you know at the very least taller <laughs> yeah We're wearing a wider tie <laughs> that's what it always did it for the wider ties <laughs> um i will say the first two lines are great in uh in terms of how many times the letter b shows up <laughs> like it's very good alliteration yeah and um meter uh the rhythm in which he sings the words whatever that's called cadence i don't know cadence sure but better be, 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 believe me um that feels older than the 80s that much alliteration in two lines oh yeah feels like a, a 50s move yeah um which i think every he'll always have some 50s moves for sure. I would also be be willing to bet that it's the line he wrote, one of the lines he wrote where he's like, okay, now I like this song because I <laughs> thought of this part. Yeah, now it's fun to sing. Yeah. Um, yeah I, any, anybody who's ever written, there's always, those are the moments where you're like, you decide not to give up on a thing you're writing is when there's a particular phrase that you go, all right, I like me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, and there's also a level between, um, oh, this will work. And then like, oh, I, I'm excited to do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't just feel like we're phoning it in. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Escape button. Um, there's, I'm sure you have uh, pieces in your stand up where you're just like, I do this because it works. And it gets me another three minutes or whatever, but I'm not in love with it. Yep. Um, and then maybe you'll like you'll find a joke on stage and you're like, oh yeah, now I like this thing. Yeah. Oh, it's one of my favorite things to do because of that little tag I found. Um, and I'll keep it forever instead of not doing it anymore. Yeah. And you know, and writing for TV, there's certainly a lot of that because you just have to. You don't get to wait until you're in love with everything you write. And a good portion of it is like, okay, that'll work. That's fine. They'll like that. They'll laugh at that. Um, I don't have, I can't be an artist. I have to be a craftsman. Yeah. Moment. Um, but you try to find, I try to find at least two or three jokes every show where I'm like, that's for me. And maybe it'll bomb. And I'm like, great. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. And you know, the more successful, most of the more successful people made peace with being a craftsman. Yeah. And take pride in that. Um, I was watching this thing about Mozart 
Mm -hmm. Apparently Mozart didn't think of himself as an artist. Smart. Because that wasn't what people thought of what he did back then anyway. Right. So he just thought, I'm sure he thought I'm very good at this. I'm sure he thought that. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't necessarily think artists as much as he thought, this is my job. This is what I do. Right. I got to build this. I got to yep. knock out this sonata. And there's something to be said for people who think that way versus any number of people we've both met who are just really high on the idea that they're artists. Yes. That goes, uh, it never goes well for people. Yeah. And what we often do is they are like, I will not do anything that is not uh, in my art box. And then you're like, well, you could have this job doing this thing that's very similar that you could accomplish because you have the skill set. And like, no, my artistic integrity. And well, you, now you still live in Phoenix. Right. See? <laughs> yeah. And now you yeah. express yourself on Reddit. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think you can only drive yourself crazy with that. Yeah. Because even if you are an artist um, with any standards, a tiny percentage of what you make is going to make you happy. And then uh, if you're a craftsman, you don't fail as much. Yeah. If you're a carpenter who builds tables uh, and you try to build a table, you usually succeed. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, well, maybe it's not my best table, but I did it. Yeah. And then some, then some little artist part of you can work on the details. But if you're constantly building tables that fall over, you fucking start doing coke. <laughs> you don't even have a good table to do it on. <laughs> you, don't, you have to do coke off the floor <laughs> in Phoenix. I can't believe I'm doing coke on this slidey table. <laughs> oh, man. This is my last $120 or whatever it costs. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. don't know, and I've never called these phone lines. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just two babes in the woods talking about Billy Joel. That's right. Man, and I didn't even think about this when we picked it, or I, when I picked it. Yeah, that's just about it on lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were listening to it right before this, and I was like, oh, we're going to need uh, some good anecdotes. Is there, uh, yeah, it is short on lyrics, which, I again, is probably um not helped along by the move to rock and roll it's the same chorus yep and even the chorus repeats itself over and over again internally and is that where the breathy thing happens um i you know i can't remember now the breathy thing is pretty funny it's it's pretty funny where is it Google, where does the breathy thing? <laughs> After secrets? I'm sure there's many times you've wanted me to hear your secrets. Maybe. Yeah. Oh boy. We, <laughs> we had a whole week to get ready. That was a big <laughs> kind of a, I don't know, good for him for picking it up and doing something kind of different and fearless in that sense yeah i think that was like uh another thing we're like oh you're a rock star you have to do like the little horny things yeah age you can you know you have to like get up from the piano at least <laughs> there is like and if you go see him in concert he's at the piano the whole time and then there's like a section of three or four songs where he's like all right i gotta go stand at the microphone just saying like still rock and roll to me. Yeah. Or this song, if he did this song, which I've never heard him do in concert. Um, and then, uh, oh, what's the other one? Matter of Trust, because he's got to play the guitar. And then he goes and sits back down. <laughs> so he plays the guitar on that? He does. Oh. Yeah, not great, but he does. Okay, I was gonna say how well. Yeah, not well. 
Like, uh, I think in every band, they all can play each other's instruments a little bit just because they're on a bus all the time. And like, let me see that thing for a second. How do you do this? And they all kind of know like back porch guitar or back porch bass. Um, and like they could hammer their way through it probably. And I'm sure like his is turned way down and right. somebody his guitar is turned way up in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's um, funny. Because he does do that thing where he'll play for the first and then the second verse, it's just sort of hanging around him while he's singing like this. An another way he uh, is a fan of Elvis. So. <laughs> and then jumps back in and you're like, oh, I, it, there's no difference in the music I'm hearing when he's strumming and when he's not strumming. There's a, have you ever, heard the song about Bossa Nova Baby by Elvis. I'm yes, I'm positive I have. The video of it is fantastic because he's got a guitar on, but all you have to do to tell there's no guitar is listen. Yeah. <laughs> and there's not, it's not that it's the wrong kind of guitar. It's there's no guitar in the song. <laughs> and he's still strumming it. Great. And then there's two, uh, I think they're conga drums, and there's a conga drum part, and he kind of moves over to him and sort of hits him a little bit. You're like, but they've been going the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like when somebody uh, tap dances in a sketch on SNL. Oh, yeah. <laughs> show them from like here up and you just hear tapping and they go like this and uh yeah <laughs> there's so much less attention to detail in the 50s and 60s that like they didn't foresee a world where someone would notice right that he's not playing the this they and also so they accidentally made a lot of hilarious content yep and for sure they didn't foresee a world where anyone would still care about these people Yes, absolutely, for There's sure. No or they guess know. wrong about which people. Yeah. Which is the best. Yeah. Alternate world, if Buddy Holly doesn't die, I think Elvis isn't as popular. It's like, or they have that uh, Michael Jackson Prince rivalry. Yeah. Like, are you Holly or Elvis? And then yeah. people get in bar fights. I want well, my favorite interview with Prince was in, in an interview, I think, I can't remember who at, said this to him. He got, I, it might have been Chris Rock in some sit down. Mm -hmm. Said, hey, isn't it funny that people thought you were the crazy one? <laughs> Amazing. And they both laugh because he was so funny. Prince was a damn genius. Absolutely. Oh, very much missed that fella. I'm yeah. going to read. I'm going to read the rest of them just for technical yeah. consistency. It's just a fantasy. It's not the real thing. It's just a fantasy. It's not the real thing. But sometimes a fantasy is all you need. It's just a fantasy. It's not the real thing. Does this one fade out? Because it sure looks like it does. I think this one just fades out. Yeah, radio time. And somehow it feels appropriate for this song. It does, right? It's the era. It's the era. It's, I think, maybe in my case, it's when I was listening to a lot of radio. Sure. And everything faded out. You know, I like to think everybody was listening to a lot of radio. Well, <laughs> and, and this, song, to... this song is a radio length song, too. Yeah, it's like under four minutes for sure. <laughs> um, so my trivia question comes into play. I uh, won't ask. I won't ask it yet. Okay. <laughs> Make them wait. Um, there's no, there's not a lot of excessive musicality to this either. There's no break, I don't think. No, but it's a tidy little pop song. Yeah. Um, it's very listenable, very enjoyable. It's over like right about when you want it to be. <laughs> it's all, the, <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. I can't believe it wasn't a bigger hit for him off that album yeah it, it's very similar to still rock and roll to me 
it's that same guitar thing. Ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk. Um, it's more interesting in some ways. Yep. At least topically, it's like more risque. And isn't it kind of cool if you're going to have to do a rock and roll song about being the sexy guy, then to do a song where it's about you jerking it, which is kind of sad, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's very very fitting for him. Yeah. Almost like they said, write a sex song. And he's like, well, I'm Billy Joel, so I'll make it sad. Yep. I'll angry at myself about it. Yeah. Uh, Self-deprecating. Self-deprecating and yet also superior to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I feel like we're being scolded in the chorus. Like we didn't say anything. And he's like, it's just a fantasy. <laughs> All right, shit. Nobody said anything. He's already <laughs> defensive, yeah. defensive and grumpy. <laughs> um, which, you know, is what happens while you're looking for the t-shirt. <laughs> you get very defensive and grumpy. Now, if he was going to do a new album, Defensive and Grumpy, that's a great title. I mean, that or the box set. Yeah, the, the box set is called Defensive and Grumpy. <laughs> yeah. The defensive ears and the grumpy ears. Yeah. And all oh. the liner notes are like, are for certain songs, are just how much he hates playing them now. Oh, just rate every song. From one to five, how much do you hate playing this song now? <laughs> and everything but Vienna is five. Yep. And then oh, you love playing Vienna? I think so. Good. It's a great song. Yeah. It's a great song. I feel like it gets played as much as Summer Highland Falls, which I think is his other favorite. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Vienna is gorgeous. We've already talked about that, but Lord, that's a good song. I feel like he never plays this one, which is weird. I think maybe he's obligated to do still rock and roll to me. Yeah. And maybe the do similar. I don't know. It's not yeah. like he doesn't have other songs that are similar to each other. <laughs> and maybe he doesn't really love this era of his stuff and he just pick a couple of hits. That may be. Yeah, it's always weird when uh, they start interviewing any uh, rock star about like, what do you like in your stuff? and they disagree with you? Yeah. You're like, oh, he doesn't like doing my favorite album? <laughs> Shit, what's wrong with me? <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, he's like, I like my older stuff. I'm like, what? Yeah. All right, I like the stuff in the middle. Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of my real favorites he never plays, like Scandinavian Skies, sure. things like that. I don't know, I guess you... Uh, suss out what most people are there for and it's probably the jukebox and probably summer highland falls is maybe a song he felt people should have liked more because a lot of times you'll have that feeling about stuff you do yes and then you just keep doing it even though nobody wants it yeah and you're like, like but i'll come around you're wrong please like this yeah <laughs> yeah i've heard a, a, a thousand stand-up comics say Fuck you, that's a great joke. Yeah. It's a very popular thing to say. Yeah. And I think that's what he's at least thinking during Summer Highland Falls. Here's a one-liner I always do. Um, I would have made a great dog because I'm loyal and I can talk. Fantastic. And it gets sometimes a laugh. <laughs> but I love that joke. And it's short enough that I'm like, well, I'll recover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> Don't do a four minute hunk on it. Yeah. I'm just like, well, just a little speed bump then if you yeah. don't like. It. It's all inside the rest of the dog stuff that always works. Great. Because by the way, talk about dogs, marriage, kids, even talking about why you don't have kids is good enough. Always mm -hmm. works always works you're still talking about kids there's your craftsman stuff <laughs> yeah yeah talk about yeah. your craftsman's table people love that <laughs> but then uh yeah the loyal and i can talk that's your art that's your little your yep. little third de lee on the side of the table <laughs> yep 
<laughs> I'm not good at making tables, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I like that song. It's a good little tune. I'll show you the picture so you can see a little bit more what's going on. Oh, boy. All right. The kid from Superstore is being levitated. Well, the lady had the, the lady's doing her art. Ah, she's a she's a magic lady. She is. <laughs> uh huh. Now, I feel like I know the song and I can't think of the line. Now, this is not as obvious a hint as I usually do, so I might oh. have to lead you there a little. But I like it so. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Okay, it's uh, uh, she's got a way. She lifts me up when I'm feeling down. Wow, you are close. It's not that song. It's funny because <laughs> it's a similar kind of song, right? But that one that would work to your credit. I think you get partial credit. Yeah, I, I get a half one. <laughs> I'll take partial credit for that. But so she's doing a magic trick, right? So uh, when she's doing a magic trick. What? She's, a, uh, she's a, uh, hypnotizing you. Well, potentially. Well, it's it's not real magic. Of course, she's a magician. It's not real magic. So, <laughs> so it's what, illusion. Right. It is an illusion. So she's going to show you only. Uh, yes. Um, it's she's got a way, right? Uh, Isn't it that song? No. Oh, she's a she'll show you. Uh, <laughs> I know. I should have it. I might be. It might be a terrible clue. You might not. Know. I'm enjoying how close I feel. Yeah, I mean, you are <laughs> close. So there's. So in a magic trick. Uh huh. There, there's, there's something that there's so, something they want you to perceive, but there's also stuff they don't want you to perceive for it to right. work. It's an illusion. Yeah. Uh, strings, mirrors, smoke and mirrors. Maybe, but uh, we don't want you to know about that part. You see that? Those are hidden. Right. Secrets. Yeah. Uh, hidden. Yep. <laughs> so what do you see? I see uh, someone, uh, a magician levitating a man. Right. And that's, right. and probably that was her Rick. objective. That was her objective because she is a magician and that's her, the illusion that she yeah. wants. <laughs> and she only wants you to see the illusion. Right. She doesn't want you to see the truth. Maybe, yeah. That When we talk about that song, that might be what we say. <laughs> she's a liar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's a deceptive, witchy woman. No, that's the wrong artist. Uh, <laughs> well, I Important that she's a lady magician and not a boy magician. That's right, right. Um, which is a witch, <laughs> but or just a lady. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's not real magic. Right. She's not a witch. It's not a witch. It's a fake man, a lady who does fake magic. <laughs> so the lady illusion, lady of illusions. Um, is it on the Stranger LP? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, I'm, I feel like that's where it lies. She's, she's not a, she's a woman. She's always a woman. Yes. Magician. She is always a woman. That's the right song. It, that's the right song. I was thinking of that song, but I said she's got away because I always conflate those two songs. That's why I said you were very close. Because <laughs> they're very similar. Fuck. So ruin your faith with her casual lies. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as Don't far as... Down. If you look at the trick, the trick works for you as long as you right, as long as you believe in it. Right. As long and as long as you don't see how as it's done. As long as you're keeping the faith. Uh. <laughs> as long as you don't see how it's done. Right. You don't see what the way she, the way she makes it look that way. Mm -hmm. 
never let me down. You never let me down before? Uh, <laughs> you'll always have my unspoken passion. <laughs> I'm I can't. I can't do it. She'll only reveal what she wants she you to wants see. you to see. Yeah. That might be a terrible clue, but I, I don't know if it is. I don't know. I think it's nice that you went with a not obvious one. Yeah, that's what I was. So you get what I'm going for. I get what you're going for. <laughs> she only reveals what she wants you to see. She. Uh... Yeah, that's the lyric, because that's what a magician does. Right. I'm just trying to remember what's that. She hides like a child. Yeah. 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 Great. She hides. No, like I think a... It's good. I know what happened. We had a, sh a long run where I got them too fast. <laughs> you went for a weird one. Yep. <laughs> it worked. Well, and then the other thing was, I was like, I was going to do a big shot. And I was like, nah. <laughs> Down the road, there will be a callback. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And that's really, I was like, and then sometimes there's like a, the, a lyric will mention a shoe or something. I'm like, do I do a big shoe? I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastical. <laughs> um, I love it. It's also been a great background because her arms are coming out of the side of your head much of the time. Yep. Great. It's worked for me on multiple levels. And he seems comfortable. He does seem he's, he might be out. Yeah, the funny thing. Also, by the way, seems like a magician. Yeah. He, but the magician's assistant. Right. Right. It used, it's not, it used to be stewardess, right? <laughs> you can't say that anymore. Right. You know, what's funny too is because I was looking for pictures of lady magicians, and then I found articles about the ladies who are breaking down the barriers in magic. Oh, ladies, no. The only good thing about magic is that it wasn't sullying women. <laughs> it's only stupid fucking men. <laughs> to go, there are better barriers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you already convinced us you used to read comic books. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, you guys heard about this? Lady magicians. Yeah, they make your paycheck disappear. <laughs> ah, that is, you're doing your set at the old folks' home. I'm so happy I didn't spill this on my laptop just now. It was so close. Yeah, me too. I'm like, so sometimes a fantasy. We heard we did the album cut. There's also the single, of course. The single was longer. And in the single, uh, towards the end, he can be heard shouting. I've got blisters on my blisters, which this would be easy for you, is a reference to which Beatles song? It is a reference to Ringo Starr, who says, I got blisters on my fingers. And I believe, I th it could be Helter Skelter, but I don't, is it? It's Helter Skelter. Helter Skelter, yeah. Nice. Okay, good. I got one. Undefeated. Woo. 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 <laughs> you really have. I, I doubted that your voice would hold up, but it has. Woo. Oh, got you. <laughs> it got better. Yeah. Well, you're like one of those people who got bonked in the head and then woke up with an accent. Except right. you got allergies and uh, now you have a better voice. Yep. Thank you for whoever hit me in the head. It's probably my dad. I think there's a list. <laughs> the list in the green room. <laughs> well, that was pretty good. That, that was, was pretty good. good. Uh, um, I got a song we should do next week. I love it. I feel like it's my turn. I feel like it's a song I've been avoiding for obvious reasons. Laura. Let's talk about Laura, which we also listen to. And if you're a Beatles fan, you'll very much enjoy a lot of the musical uh, shoplifting that happened to make this song possible. 
may I ask why you were avoiding it? Um, it's thematically, it's very close to home. Ah. That's all I'll say. So now you have to tune in next week, Bruno Mars. <laughs> well, that is good of you to put that on, uh, on the docket then. Yeah, it's time. Yeah. Well, and then I'll try to think of one that bums me out. Great. Okay. <laughs> it's been definitely very interesting to talk about. Yeah. And not just if you're me. <laughs> it's also interesting to talk about if you're me. Oh, great. Yeah. 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 On the show. So. Yeah. So two for two. Who's with us? All right, everybody. And as we always say, stay healthy, Bruno Mars. Amen.